Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing part two, explaining all about embroidery fonts. So first let's look at an example and I'll run through all the things that you need to keep in mind when you're purchasing a font. The first thing we want to look at is the size. So this one comes in a 0.5, 1, 1.5, 1 2, 2.5, and, and 3 inch options. When you go through the description, you want to make sure that they also have uppercase letters, lowercase letters, numbers, and punctuation. Punctuation is one of those things that you forget about, but if you want to do miss or mister, you're going to need that little dot. Or if you want to do quotes, you're going to need those quotation marks, so it's good to have those too. Also need to check and make sure that the font comes in the correct format. So for fonts, you have your machine format, but you also want it to be in a BX format. And the reason for this is if you only have it in your machine's format, then it's going to read each individual letter separately, and you'll have to do one letter at a time. Instead, you want to download software where you can use a BX format. I like to use the base tier of Unbrilliance, and it is completely free to edit my fonts. When you click on this drop down, you'll see all your different types of fonts. So you do have to drag each individual size of font into Brilliance. It'll give you each size for each font in a row, making it really easy to navigate which one you want to use. After you select a font, you can kern the letters by simply clicking on the green dots to move each individual letter. Another cool feature is it'll let you know if you are out of your hoop bounds. So mine is set for a 4x4 hoop, so on the bottom you'll see it says 3 and 15 16 by 3 and 15 16 In this case, the red is indicating that this is out of my hoop, so I'm just going to subtract letters until the red's gone. Here it's only going to let me do the O, L, and I, so it's going to take two hoops to make Olivia, just like so. Or I could decide to use a smaller font so that they could all be done in one hooping. But it's also cool because the red will let you know how long your finished project is, so you can measure it out on your project from start to finish. Similar to embroidery files, you also want to test your fonts before putting it on a finished product because it might look really nice in your editing software, and then when you get it on your scrap piece of material, it might be a total train wreck. There are two different file formats to choose from when you're saving your work. The first one is the working file, and that's going to save it in a BE format. This format's good for if you want to go back into your computer and re-edit it in Brilliant. The only drawback with the BE file is your machine cannot read that file, so you'd also have to save it as a stitch file, which is going to be in your specific machine format. So for me, it's PES. Your machine can obviously read it because it's in your file format of your machine, but if you were wanting to go back into it later to edit it, it's not going to let you do that because it can't read it back on the computer. Now it's time to test out these fonts. So I'm just going to pick some colors. I like to pick ones that I don't normally use for testing just because I don't like to waste the thread. So here I'm just being picky and choosy on ones that I probably haven't even touched or used ones. So far I like the first two. This one, it's like it just keeps going around and around. It's almost like it's doing too much that it looks sloppy for that T. I mean it looks okay, but I don't know. This one started off really weird. It started in the center, but I was like, okay, it's cursive. Maybe it's gonna like connect when it loops in. And no, it just had that weird dot in between and then did the same thing for the V and the A and it created so much work. So now I'd have to literally flip it over and seam rip those stitches, otherwise it's just gonna look like a hot mess. So I guess this is a valuable lesson as to why you test your fonts on scrap pieces of fabric first. I just don't understand the logic behind it and it's frustrating.
Olivia, I don't really like the way they pinned it. So there's points here and then here and then in the middle of the letters. I'm not sure why they did that. So what you would need to do is go onto the back seam ripper and try to get all of those individual little pieces of the seams out. And that's how you would do that. But this is just a good sample to have of all your different fonts. And this will tell you if you like them or don't like them. So for me, the ones that I would keep is probably just Sam and Ben. This one's okay, but it's not my favorite. It's just really bulky and almost rips the fabric because it pulls it so tight because it does so many seams. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and leave me a comment if you have any questions. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!